previously on Gears. As always, it's a Tuesday afternoon. Great to welcome Spike the Car Guy. Spikey, welcome, my friend. Hello. Good afternoon. It's uh, very nice to be here in yes. your new fancy studio. It's very nice, eh? Very, very. You're very far away, though. I know. I know. <laughs> The I'm side. Like far away. You know, there's far nothing away. like real estate. That's all I'm saying. Well, well at least there's um, at least there's no echo or echo. Delay, 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 delay. True that. True. <laughs> Spikey, listen. The big news, of course, this week is gyms. Gyms, 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 gyms. For those who don't know, the Johannesburg International Motor Show, and it is turning out, Spikey, you got to say, to becoming quite a prestigious show. Well, it is ranked as, and I'm not sure of this uh, of this if this status still stands, but mm-hmm. it's. The biggest, if not one of the biggest um, automotive shows in the Southern Hemisphere, and certainly the biggest one on Africa. Yeah. So, And it's accredited by that group of people that accredits international motor shows. Yes. So it's got the same status as Paris and Frankfurt and Geneva and Detroit and eh? all those others. So for the South African industry, certainly it's the biggest event of the year of its kind. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it is, uh, it is as you say, prestigious. It's very prestigious. prestigious. Okay, now, because yes. um, yes. we're going to yes. see a lot of interesting vehicles. We're going to see a lot of interesting vehicles um, and we're going to see, unfortunately, we're not going to see a lot of interesting vehicles. Uh, mm. some, of the, some of the manufacturers are conspicuous by their absence this year at gyms. Why would that be i just think it's a budget thing it comes down to how much a stand costs versus how much value they think they get out of it yeah and certainly the smaller manufacturers and when i say smaller in this country certainly uh volvo for example won't be there very Alfa, sad Al- alfa romeo yeah. fiat won't be there and uh i find very sad uh, as of this moment none of the supercar manufacturers will be there so no very Lamborghini, sad. Bentley, Lotus, Ferrari, Porsche, none of them are there. Which is uh, again, I, I suppose, down to how much they uh, put in versus how yeah. much they get out. They get out, and they don't feel that they need to be there to 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 garner sales. Or, but also for me, it's it's sad because it's not just about sales; it's about branding and about awareness and about you know top of mind and that kind of stuff. But having said that, there will be a lot of other very interesting cars there. Um, mm. I'll just run through a couple of the ones that I uh, that I know about. Yeah. Uh, Volkswagen, for example, will have the Sirocco GTS, which Ooh. is a uh, kind of 30th, uh, 30th anniversary edition of that car. So it's got a few extra stickers and bigger wheels and more plastic bits and such and such. And uh, what's it, I mean, does it compare to the Sirocco R? No, it's in fact the uh, standard 155 kilowatt motor uh, that you get in oh, the so Sirocco. Oh, so it's just got it's fancy, just, it's just a some stickers on pretty it. looking Sirocco. Okay, well done. Yeah. Uh, they will have a high-tech concept car on their stand that they say will show the future direction of their brand. And I'm not sure what that, cl- what that could be. If it, it can't be any, quarter, any kind of uh, app because the app has been shown left, right, and center, and it's available yes. in Europe. There's another car called the Nils, which is a plug-in hybrid, which I don't think it'll be that because it's a very, that is a very concepty car, if you mm, know what I mean. Mm, mm. Um, so I'm not quite sure. Well, I'm, looking to f- I'm looking forward to seeing what they actually have. Uh, they've also got an iBeetle, which has got, uh, just for you, Sash, because I know you'll really appreciate this, the iBeetle has got, got Siri integration oh, for brilliant. your iPhone. Oh, man, I've got to get one yeah, of those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. hope it works better in that Beetle than it does That's on the phone because the phone <laughs> sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine it in the car? Yeah. Go to Kay. this is Walmart. The, this is the point. Uh, please direct me to Main Road, Bryanston. I'm sorry. I can't direct you to anywhere in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is the point? Anyway. You know, very peculiar. Uh, so okay, they're, yeah. they're having that. Uh, Infinity, will be ha- well, they've got a, a new oh, model. Oh, nice. As well as the FX uh, Vettel edition. Oh, they're going to have it there? They're going to have <gasps> it there. I'm so going to drive it up. That's the car that uh, Sebastian uh, tweet, uh, tweeted. Uh, tweaked. Tweaked is the word I'm looking for. Yes. Uh, so that's it's called the Vettel edition. It's an FX, which is their F- SUV. So that'll be quite cool to see. I'm looking forward to seeing that. But Big news on the BMW stand. The, ah. uh, they say they'll have the 4 Series Coupe. Okay. Uh, which is, if you don't know what the 4 Series is, it's basically uh, the 3 Series used to have a 4-door and a Coupe version. They've now canned the 3 Series Coupe and it's now called a 4 Series. So there will no longer be an M3 Coupe. It'll be the M4. I must say, the, the people at BMW mm. are very clever. Mm. However, they don't know how to count. One. Yeah, because they, they started, they, it was like six... Then three, then mm. five, then seven. Now they got one. Yeah. And slowly they for a they, while for a while they had eight. Yes, they had eight. Yeah. So now they really now they've got four. 
So two, and eventually they will have managed to count up all of the numbers from one to eight. Well, Audi's done that already. They're very good because they had the A1. Yes. Uh, they had the, uh, sorry, they've got the A1. They had the A2. That's right. That thing that fell over every time he went around it's a corner. Terrible. Uh, A3, A4, Four, A5, five. A6, A7, A8. Gee whiz. So they've, got they, the, they've got the octet, if you like. I must tell you, these Germans <laughs> are very clever. Very clever. Very and so clever. original in their brand, I in, know, their, in their model naming. Beautiful. We've well called this one one, yeah. and the next one will be two, <laughs> and then three. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all owned by the same people. <laughs> Isn't that bizarre? Listen, let's... Uh, okay, what other cars do you th- what uh, are we going to see? Uh, very simply, uh, there, there will be some Chinese, uh, some new Chinese cars, and you can't discount the Chinese and say, mm-hmm. oh, I don't care about the Chinese because the Chinese are coming. And they are slowly taking over. And by all accounts, by the cars I've driven, I drove one, the first Chinese car I drove was absolutely horrendous. Yeah. The next one was still pretty bad, but by comparison was a thousand times better than the first yeah. one. So they are, they, they are learning and building cars at an exponentially good rate. Brilliant. So the FAW will be there with some new cars. GWM will have 13 cars on its stand. Wow. MG, which is a British brand owned yeah. by the Chinese, so it's, Chinese but British yes. they'll have the new MG3 Super Mini uh, and then for some if you're a motorsport fan they uh, there will be some motorsport cars there as well there'll be really? uh, an AMG Petronas Mercedes Benz yes. F1 car yeah, and the to- uh, Toyota TS-030 hybrid Lamar car Stunning. So there will be some interest that side as well. Okay. So that's pretty much uh, not the highlights, but those are some of the cars you can expect to see uh, this year, Jim's. Of course, all the other manufacturers that we haven't mentioned will be there. Uh, right. Mercedes Benz, uh, one of the, all the bigger ones will be there. And the French are also going to be there. Citroën, uh, Citroën Peugeot. Peugeot, Renault, they're Great. all there. All right. Uh, as long as as well as the Koreans, uh, Kia, Hyundai, they're They'll there. GM there. is there. So it's it's a it's it's, it's uh, going to be a great show. It will be, despite the the lack of uh, some manufacturers not mm, being there, mm. there, it will be well attended by the majority of the manufacturers. Great and then just very quickly, uh, it opens on Friday to the public. Yes. Uh, where they're filming tomorrow for RPM TV, uh, but Friday it opens to the public. Open from nine in the morning till six at night. Tickets at the door at Compu Ticket, uh, starting at a hundred bucks and working their way down, depending how old you are. All right, well worth going to see. Definitely, now. definitely. Let's talk about electric cars. Yeah. Okay. Electric car. Yeah. We're going to have an electric car. It's yeah. going to be very good. You plug mm. it in. Spikey, I'm not sold on this. <laughs> I'm really not. I'm, you know, it's, I'm really, I'm not sold on, on the, the, the Prius and mm. those kind of mm. hybrids. Mm. And I'm definitely not sold on these electric cars. Tell me what's going on. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm not quite sold yet. Yet. But. But there's a but. The thing is, if you look at the electric, and I'm talking purely electric cars now, not yeah. not hybrids and what what because yeah, 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 yeah. I think hybrids are a lot of crap. Yeah, I think I hybrids agree. are a, a kind of middle stepping stone to, and they'll disappear soon enough. But fully electric cars, I think, are you've got to start somewhere. And at the moment, yes, you don't get a lot of range, and yes, they are expensive, and yes, there's concerns about the batteries being not uh, reliable in the sense that they that they die very quickly mm, over the mm. lifespan of the car so you have to replace them three or four times so there's all those concerns but you have to start somewhere and I think once they get it right electric cars will be uh, I, I think that's the way it's going and I'm talking from a European and American point of view I think in this country it's a long long time yeah. before we see a viable electric car market just because we all know how let's say unreliable our uh, electricity supply is um, but also, I, I also think, don't forget, if you look at Europe, for example, mm. people live in cities. Yeah. So there it makes a bit of sense because if you are driving and it's only four or five miles or 10 kilometers or whatever, yeah. I do understand how it can be viable. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm still not sold on it. Yeah. And I think that's where, that's what I'm saying is that eventually it will become the thing where that won't be a concern. But mm. at the moment, if you take the two electric cars that are coming to South Africa, the first one, uh, yeah. which is coming next month, uh, apparently, is the Nissan Leaf, mm-hmm. which has been overseas for a while. Uh, they reckon you'll get about a 200 kilometer range. Now, that's the manufacturer's claim. So in reality, you'll probably get 140 Ks yeah. range. And it takes six to 10 hours to charge. And I don't think that it's going to take too long before you get a situation where the range doubles and the charging time halves and yes. all that. No, no, I agree with that. But yeah. I, I do agree with you. I think it's far more suited to a European condition mm. where, as you say, the distances are a lot shorter. You don't have yeah. guys uh, commuting like they do from Pretoria to Joburg, for example, in stop-start traffic that will then ruin the battery life. And then they take six hours to charge. 
And then also the charging ability. I mean, is it just sort of, oh, look, here we go. I've got a plug and it plugs in the cigarette light and it plugs into the wall. Is that how? Well, yeah, not quite the cigarette light, yes. but, but the plugs into the wall, yeah. Um, they are they very cleverly. You say the BMW people, are very, they are very clever. And so are <laughs> the Japanese because what they do is uh, the i3, which is the other electric car coming to South Africa next yes. year, confirmed. That's coming. BMW. Yeah, very odd looking odd looking car um what you do is you can plug it into the wall in your garage or under your carport or wherever you choose yes. to plug it in but uh that'll give you a charge time of say six to eight hours but if you buy the wall box supplied by bmw <laughs> it, it does cut, it in it, two hours it cuts your charge time to sort of two to four hours or four to six, whatever the, whatever the yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a shorter charging time yeah so you it's still not ideal because it's still four hours or six hours to exactly charge. but that that box that you get from bmw still has to go into your mains yeah 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 anyway it's all it's all um it's all very very it's, interesting it's very in it, but i will say mm. i will say that i drove uh, B, uh mini had a pilot project okay uh, that they ran in the uk and one of their cars found its way here mini e which is a fully electric mini uh, it was a left-hand drive which is a little bit odd from that point of view to drive in this country but um it is the same drivetrain that's going into the i3 and it is a very interesting car to drive because it is actually a lot of fun you know despite the fact there's no noise and whatever um the actual the actual driving is quite enjoyable. So from that point of view, you're not going to lose anything in terms of driving enjoyment in an electric car versus a petrol car. They are quite a lot of fun. The, the, I'm glad you brought up the thing about the sound. Because eventually what's going to happen is you're going to be using most of the energy of the batteries on the hooter. Yeah. To tell people, by the way, that there is a vehicle yeah. coming down the Actually, road. you have to look at this direction because there might be an electric car. <laughs> they, they, and they're talking about all kinds of systems. They're talking about cars that have, you know, built-in sound, uh, ex sort of exterior <laughs> loudspeakers. That, <laughs> yeah. and, and they're talking about things having, like, pedestrians wearing proximity sensors. So, like, something vibrates on them so they know there's a car coming. No, this is all too fifth element for me. <laughs> this is too, too, too. You know, much. it's all going it, to, it's going to take time to evolve and it will get there. But these are the concerns that you have is that, oh, actually, the pedestrians won't even notice. And because yeah. they are, you drive them and they are practically, especially at low se speeds, they are practically silent. Yeah. Yeah, so weird stuff. But listen, uh, it is interesting. It is innovative. Although, the, do you know, by the way, the first electric car was built in like 1921 it or was something a, It like was that. a, sorry, not the first electric car. The first hybrid car I know was a Porsche. Yeah. And that was in the 20s. But yeah, but back when they were in, in the days, in the early, early days of cars, uh, you know, the, the, the division between petrol and battery was, was quite, uh, it, was, it was not an unknown thing to have a mm. battery-powered car. And I'd love to know the reason, but for some reason, everyone went with petrol instead of batteries. So, the, it, in the early days of cars, batteries were very much part of the, part of part the, of the scheme. Yeah, but, weird. you know, it didn't turn out that way. And now we're kind of back to square one, if you like. Yeah. Mm. All right, final two things. Uh, yeah. EcoSport. Ford EcoSport. Yes. Uh, like a little car. Really, I like this, yeah. Really a lot of fun. Uh, it's a little, it's compact SUV by Ford. Uh, the one I drove had the one liter turbo motor, the EcoBoost motor, 92 kilowatts, 170 new newton meters. Um, and really as a, as a kind of uh, town runabout, as a city runabout, as a everyday kind of practical family car, it is a lot of fun. Uh, I drove the titanium spec, which has got everything. Okay. Uh, for two hundred and forty-four thousand rand, uh, and I mean everything: Bluetooth and climate control and cruise control and voice command and what what and blah blah. Uh, but a lot of fun, and I think it's a particularly nice-looking little compact SUV. Uh, it's not uh, in any way, shape, or form designed to go sort of out of town even though it does have better clearances than most uh, mm -hmm. it's there's no all-wheel drive available for example and it's the, the ride is much more a kind of road friendly ride rather than off-road friendly ride okay. by comparison to say something like a uh, Renault Duster which is in the same category of car okay. but is much more would be much more capable off-road because it's got all-wheel drive because the manual gearbox is designed with a shorter first gear so the EcoSport as a city runabout is a superb little thing I yeah. really enjoyed it and I think for the money that you pay it's really not bad value I think it's a good, uh, good little car as yeah. well. Finally, you are driving most, probably one of the most exciting cars um, to come out um, <laughs> in recent years. Of course, it is the brand new Nissan Sentra. I was hoping you wouldn't ask me about that because I actually, <laughs> I, I've been driving for a week. I've done zero research on it. No, but <laughs> listen, uh, you know what? Uh, this is where, where I think guys, Japanese guys like Nissan and Toyota have got things wrong. Years back, the Corolla. 
in my yeah. opinion, was a sporty. Yes, it was a family kind of car, but it had some sportiness about it. Now, now I would never look at a Corolla ever again. Yeah. I just, I just. Well, the away. new Corolla is coming too, Jim. So Great. Maybe have a look at that one. Okay, we'll look at it then. <laughs> uh, I'm sure. I'll, I'm sure I'll come out with the same you'll, same uh, decision. You'll change your mind and place your order straight away. Yes, I'm sure I will. Uh, Nissan Sentra. Back in the days, I remember watching Nissan Sentras racing race in, in that, touring cars. Yeah, they had a GT version with a exactly, boot. I mean, it was exactly, awesome. it was awesome. Yeah. So. You know, then they came out of the Almira, and then they came with the new Sentra, and then I was like, oh, oh God, what are we doing? Yeah. So, where, I mean, listen, as you say, you haven't, but you dr- you've driven I've it. I've driven the car, and you know what, it's, it's, it's not a bad car. Okay. You know, in terms of, in terms of how it goes, it's, you know, it's got a, it's got a 1500 motor, uh, I think, mm-hmm. and so it's not the most powerful thing in the world, but it's, it's adequate. It's fairly well spec. the one I'm driving. It's got horrendous okay. velour type material on the seats, which are just bloody awful. And I don't know why they put those. Why would they do that? I don't know. I, it's very, ir- and it's in the, it's in the, it's in the door lining as well. So it's, no! you, it, you can't get away from it. It's, ir- and it's black and it's horrible. Uh, but in terms of a drive, it's comfortable. It goes easy. Yeah. I think the, the thing they sell that car on is that it's good value because it is a big car. So you pay mm. a sort of, uh, you pay a, a, a it's lesser amount for for more you get more car for your money yeah. physically speaking yes. you know, it's got a big boot it's got decent space in the back um, but I do think also that there are cars that m- certain manufacturers make and I think this is one of those cars and I think the Chev Cruze is another one of those yeah. cars that manufacturers make as a fleet vehicle they know that it just has yeah. to tick certain boxes and they will sell by the boatload into rental fleets and corporate fleets and taxi fleet and they don't really care that it has to be a, a yeah. world beating car it just has to deliver on the things that it's designed to do and it has to be reliable and they'll sell them by the boatload and I think that's what the Sentra is it's a car that just has to do a job there we it go and no as more you than say that. tick the boxes uh, in terms of there we go rental companies go and sit and say you know what this gives us everything yep. we need etc yep. etc et and it's good value as and well. it's comfortable yeah. and it goes and it's reliable so we'll buy 70 of them thank you very much in white terrific yeah. Yeah, in white <laughs> with black Video. Yeah. yeah, and then just very quickly, uh, mm. RPM tomorrow night. Yes, uh, we have got uh, the results of my trip to France two weeks ago. The Volvo, the updated Volvo V60. Good uh, update on our Honda long-term test car and the Ferrari California. Oh, the thirty. Yeah, the thirty, which uh, oh. you should you should probably watch the show uh, Supersport Eight tomorrow evening. Good. Uh, you should probably watch the show just for that Ferrari because it was the last television appearance of that particular Ferrari. Yes, until before some it was killed. Before some lady drove it and overtook a truck and At smashed a red it light into a Pajero. Yes, and it was dead. So that's, oh, there we, there go. we go. Interesting vehicle, that's for sure as well. Spiky, that's brilliant. Next week we'll ca- recap, I think, on gyms. We'll have a, a quick recap yeah. of gyms and some more exciting stuff about cars. And we will talk about most definitely the Jaguar F-Type, which <sighs> I get on Friday. Oh my God, Supercharged you Supercharged V8. I can't wait. Oh, you're going to need some new underwear. I think so too. <laughs> yes. As always, on a Tuesday afternoon, don't miss it. Spike the Car Guy, of course, from uh, RPM TV and uh, Balls Visual Radio. Spikey, always great to see you, my friend. Thank you, Sasha. Lovely to be here. We'll yes. see you next week. Yep. Enjoy gyms, and we will see you next week, Tuesday. Arrivederci. Gears on balls.co.za. Gears on balls with Sasha Martinengo and Daisy Fincham.